there. Number two spot there. 47 is Esmond Williams. 42, Reese Lindley and Campbell Graying, 58 there. I'm not even sure how many laps this will be until such time as the, uh, as the uh, thing ticks over. It does say six laps to go. It was a uh, six lap race so this looks like to be a full restart i guess they got time up their sleeve we've had no issues all day wrong really to speak of we had one oil leak in the uh Bojard class and they had to spend a bit of time checking the track there because another bike went down but i'm pretty sure that uh, we we're well ahead of time be another round of this uh, in about a month or so i don't know the exact date i did say i tried to find out i haven't done that yet and uh, of course they're doing the uh, track day the day before which a lot of these guys and girls have actually gone and spent the day running around the track i should really get my ass into one of them myself i have a new zealand a motorcycle new zealand license but that expires this week unfortunately I only got it about six weeks ago but i believe to do the track day you've got to do some sort of licensing there whether it's a day license or whatever but uh that's the way it is in the future and uh the battle is out the front there look at that bike of reese lindsay it's uh same sort of model bike, but just that little bit quicker than Jacob Stroud, that back straight. But uh, look at Stroud, right round the outside there. Makes the track long, it comes onto the front straight. It will be a drag to the start. But in fact, look at Stroud, right outside there. He uh, went right out into that uh, asphalt there. A couple of years ago, wouldn't have got away with that. That would have been dirt. So uh, a bit of uh, a long way to go. But uh, anyway, he's recovered from that. And the battle is on also between James Barman and I think Tarbin Walker there. But, oh, Tarvin Walker down there at Toyota lost the front end by the look of it. So Tarvin Walker out of action there. And he gets up and runs away. The yellow flag is out there for the rest of the riders. So uh, lucky he didn't take out anyone else. But uh, James Barnum in third place. And as I say, he's got a newcomer's jacket on. Pretty sure this is a newcomer's jacket. So uh, outstanding ride for him, especially in such a large field. We've got, I think, 22, 21 bikes started that race. 21 bikes started that race. The organisers are just looking over towards Toyota to see whether they have to... Uh, no, everything's good as gold. They've got a report back from the flag marshals there that say the bike's out of the way. The riders certainly got up and run off into the distance, so all good as gold. OK, actually, here's something interesting. The results from that uh, race 10, the intermediate sprint, where Roger Cathro got a 20-second penalty. He still managed to, uh, despite fit, going across the start-finish line in, in lead place, he still managed to uh, remain in second spot there. Uh, four seconds a lap faster than those. Yep, four seconds a lap faster than Uriah Riken than that. So he got a 20-second penalty, but uh, still only lost one place. Uh, we've had a couple of interesting uh, jump starts. Remember, Tim Reeves jumped... Uh, the start Tim Reeves six or seven times world sidecar champion Tim Reeves jumped the start here at the Suzuki series and he uh, managed to make up that 20 seconds but then on the same token I think he took five lap seconds a lap out of the uh, existing sidecar races no disrespect to the local guys but this guy was world champion on the machinery of that uh, quality as well just a sensation to have out here and hopefully he's going to come back to New Zealand this year as well uh, didn't have the best of TTs he was out in race two there at the Isle of Man, they had a fuel problem in the first race in the sidecars. He has won TTs before, um, and it was a bit disappointing. They had a fuel pump problem or fuel supply problem. They sorted that out during the week, and uh, after a couple of laps, he was out of that race. The battle's still on out the front, and Reese Lindsay's got that power down the centre straight, but Stroud goes up high. They're bloody even for braking. Well, I'm not supposed to say the word bloody, well, actually, no one's mentioned it, so even for braking, but. Uh, and coming out of the corner, they both went up high, and it's almost like Reese Lindsay pushed uh, Stroud up high into Higgins. I don't think that was intentional. It's he had the line. It's up to Stroud to try and pass, but uh, that's handed the lead, well, made um, Reese Lindsay maintain the lead. Just two laps to go. Jacob Stroud, the quickest man on the track, a 22-7, a 23-006 for Reese Lindsay. A 22 Eight two eight. So Esmond Williams. Look at him. He's right on the tail. Of him. He's uh, in the twenty two eight. In fact, Esmond Williams just set the fastest lap on the twenty two three. So uh, he's half, he's point four of a second quicker than he's. What a excellent race, mate! This winter series racing is just so outstanding. Two KTM's out the front. Single cylinder three seventy three cc three seventy three point two to be exact. And a Honda four cylinder would have been eligible for pro light at the New Zealand Superbike Championships a handful of years ago, but it's not longer in the class. And Campbell Grayling goes around the outside of uh, 
Tarb not Tarbin, James Barnum, Tarbin Walker is in fact out. He crashed at turn one, so the battle is on for fourth and fifth as well. Here they go. Barnum went up high, but Barham, sorry, went up high, coming out of that corner there, out of the hairpin, and Grayling's tucked in behind them, but the bike of uh, Barham, so the R3 Yamaha is just that little bit quicker, a 320cc bike. The lead bike's coming out of the Higgins corner for the Junior Trophy here. Haven't even had time to tell you who's sponsoring it, sorry, but I think it's a Vic Club sponsored one. The lead bike's out there. It is Reese Lindsay in the front. It's going to be out to what Stroud can do. Is he going to get in the way? Can he go around the outside? We saw him go around the outside earlier on, uh, but he run really wide on the track, and I think this race is going to go to Reese Lindsay. I don't know that Jacob Stroud, no, he's not going to be able to pop out there, but what an outstanding race from Reese Lindsay there. But it was still his Mom Williams. Um, it's not even the finish, is it? Sorry. <laughs> Lap four, lap four, sorry. Um, Esmond Williams still the fastest man on the track, and there's another bike amongst them, but that is one of the back markers, so they all go around the outside of him or her. Don't know who that is. That uh, doesn't feature further down there as going across the start finish line, and the battle's still going on for fourth and fifth between James Barnum and Campbell Grayling. Often you can only see one. Here comes Grayling up on the inside in the 58 bike. What a lovely move. Gains about five bike lengths. Runs it wide coming out of turn three, but tucks it back in and around that back marker. What a graceful ride. Uh, although aggressive, aggressive graceful. I don't know whether I've used either of those words. Uh, graceful is certainly not in my normal vocabulary. <laughs> oh, it gets colourful, doesn't it? No, not really. Been a long day, folks, but uh, anyway, the lead bike's going into Higgins, and it is Jacob Stroud back out in the front, takes the tight line in there. Reese Lindsay's bike's a little bit quicker down the back. There's eight bike lengths. Maybe six bike lengths. He closes up there. It will be Jacob Stroud, the better man on the brakes down in here, but Cam, uh, Reece Lindsay goes up on the inside. Yeah, brakes a little bit later does Jacob Stroud then. Uh, side by side across the start finish right. That was uh, 77 and 10 with just one thousandth of a second between them. One thousandth of a second between uh, JP Sabritz and Jason Musgrove. So uh, it races all the way through the races. Uh, one thousandth of a second, incredible. All right, those three lead bikes go in there. It's going to be interesting once those three lead bikes come across those lappers there further down, the two bikes I was mentioning, and I think both of those guys are wearing uh, yellow vests, so that's pretty outstanding racing and shows that they've got the quality to run side by side with each other or other competitors, and, uh, yeah, those three lead bikes are going to carve those guys up there and then have their own little battle as well. So races everywhere. Where's this other race between Campbell Grayling and... Um, Campbell Grayling's out. Campbell Grayling has disappeared off the face of the earth. I don't know where he's disappeared. That was a shame. That was Campbell Grayling versus uh, James Barnum. So uh, Barnum out there on his own coming out of the hip. And here's that uh, battle of the three bikes. We've got past those uh, lappers there. They'll be going down there. They'll see it all the way to the start finish line in this restarted junior trophy. Um, they'll have no problems at all with other back markers. They'll all be out of the way by the time they get through there. I see Turiana Banks out there too. Is she faster than her father? Ooh, Clive's ahead. Clive's got a few uh, metres on her. Clive's, in fact, about eight seconds ahead. A change of uh, position from the last uh, lap. OK, the chicken flag is awaiting. The white flag goes away, and it is Jacob Stroud taking it, followed by uh, Esmon Williams and Reese Lindsay. And in the process, Jacob Stroud, a 21.025, the fastest lap of the race. So he just got faster and faster. Once he got away from the other guys, he got faster and faster. Those two other bikes, Sabretz and, uh, and uh, Musgrave, I think, swapped around 27 thousandths of a second. So might, they might be at the tail end. They might be doing 20 seconds slower than the lead bike, but a hell of a good battle going on there. Now, where's that graceful crasher or graceful puller 